the major sections, the structure of the Kuzari? How did you and Olivi set the uh, this writing up? Okay, so the the book is written as a dialogue. It's not the first medieval Jewish book written as a dialogue between two characters. Before that was um, Solomon ibn Giro, Shmelomo ibn Giro's Makor Chaim, Source of Life. But this is a sort of a living dialogue recalling somewhat platonic dialogues in which all the um, all the characters, all the protagonists uh, contribute toward the discussion and the conclusions. So it begins with uh, the historical story of the conversion of the Khazars. The Khazars were a people in Central Europe, Central Asia who for some reason converted to Judaism. Uh, according to the traditions that we have, it was a result of the fact that the king of the Khazars uh, had a dream in which he was told that his intentions were good, but his actions weren't. He went looking for a, a alternate religion. Uh, he talked to a Christian and Muslim and then to a Jew and decided to become a Jew. There are various versions of the story and the one Halevi tells is to to promote his own views. So, for instance, he adds into the the king's searches a philosopher, an Aristotelian philosopher. So, the first book begins with the king's dream, his calling upon a philosopher, a Christian, and a Muslim to try to convince him that they had the correct uh, actions. Uh, he doesn't call a Jew at first because he's convinced that the fact that Jews are such a small, despised minority that it couldn't be po they couldn't possibly have the true religion. So he invites these other uh, representatives, quickly finds them unappealing, and then uh, calls a Jew. So the first book is devoted to the general exposition of Judaism and the proof of Judaism through history. At the beginning of the second book, the king converts and actually converts his whole people. It's interesting. He doesn't wait till the end. Usually when you have a dialogue uh, in which one side is trying to convince the other, it's usually at the end of the of the book that one side is convinced. Here, the king converts to the beginning of the second part. Uh, then the second, third, and fourth parts are devoted to further expositions of Judaism. What the king or what the the author calls Hebrew questions, uh, details about the names of God, about the reasons for the commandments, uh, what makes a a good person, what is wrong with charism, uh, and a number of other topics. The fifth book is devoted to a re refutation of a philosophy. Uh, even though at the beginning of the book, the king is exposed to a philosopher and doesn't accept the philosopher, it's only at the end of the book that the author presents a, I'd say, a rationalistic refutation of Aristotelian philosophy. And then at the very end of the book, the Haver, the sage, informs the Kuzari, the king, that he's off to the land of Israel. The Kuzari tries to convince him that not to go, it wasn't necessary. And the Javier says, no, he's going, he explains why, and this mirrors Judah Halevi's own life, where at the end of his life, he also went to the land of Israel. I'd say it probably also polemic against his contemporary uh, Iberian Jewish community, who were very, very comfortable in Iberia and Spain. They, many of them were rich, many of them were courtiers, and they had no real interest in getting to the land of Israel. So the book Kuzari and the life of Judah Halevi work together to argue for the importance of living in the land of Israel.